I have maintained and tuned Jaguar cars for many years. The remarkable performance and high standard of finish of each successive model has always impressed me. Every component is perfectly made and only high quality materials are used. Although fully aware of this, I was surprised when I visited their factory at Coventry and found out exactly how much thought, care and thoroughness went into every car produced. I had been looking forward to my visit, and it turned out to be a fine morning. My first impression was one of size. The factory was much larger than I had imagined. It soon became quite clear how they were able to produce such a fine motor car in large numbers. There exists a perfect balance between the use of hand labor and mass production machinery. The general pattern of production is standardized and I started my tour in the machine shops. I saw aluminum cylinder head castings being loaded onto a track. Machining the camshaft guides was one of the first operations. Then machining of hemispherical combustion chambers one by one ensures they are all of the same capacity and are smoothly finished. As a contrast, one operation completes drilling of all vertical holes. By heating the head in an oven, the metal is expanded which allows the hard steel valve and tappet guides to be inserted. would appear. All burrs are removed and the head polished until it shines. By then the head has completely cooled and the valve guides and seats are machined. High pressure water jets are used for cleaning and swarf is blown away by compressed air. The cooling channels in the head are then sealed and filled with air. Then, by immersing in water, a check for cracks is carried out. Finally, a thin skim is taken off the face. The head is inspected and when passed is ready for the block. Cylinder blocks of high grade cast iron are manufactured to the same degree of accuracy with most of the work carried out by precision machines. An operation that fascinated me tremendously was gear hobbing. The teeth on the blank gear shaft gradually appearing, so slowly yet so clearly. When finished, their dimensions are checked extremely carefully. Every face and angle is measured to within two thousandths of an inch. Still in the machine shop, I saw stress-relieved crankshaft forgings being first drunk.
Then the main bearings being machined to the highest degree of accuracy with one man controlling two machines. I noticed big end journals being machined in a similar way and to the same degree of accuracy. With these operations complete, the crankshaft is statically checked for balance. Any excess metal is removed from the webs and the shaft is checked again. Both big end and main bearings are then ground to extremely fine limits using high speed carborundum wheels. Next, all oil flow holes on big end journals are countersunk with a hand file. Hands and machine then work together, finely lapping and polishing all bearing surfaces. A specially prepared ink solution is then poured over the shaft, which is magnetized. This makes even the smallest crack visible to the naked eye ensuring that only perfect crankshafts are used. Balance is again checked, this time dynamically. Once more, any remaining surplus metal is removed from the webs until a perfect balance is obtained. A final critical examination follows before it is passed to engine assembly, my next port of call. The main assembly track is fed by several sub-assembly areas. In one of these, crankshafts, flywheel and clutch are put together and balanced as a unit. Each part is numbered. then broken down, ensuring that a matched unit is reassembled on the track. In the next bay, connecting rods and pistons are being handled. Connecting rods are sorted into different weight groups to within a maximum tolerance of two drams. End alignment is then checked to within two thousandths of an inch. Finally, end balance is measured. This also subdivides the connecting rods into matched sets of six. The fit of the gudgeon pin depends much on the skill of the operator. It must be the correct fit at normal room temperature. Pistons are grouped into sixes and matching sets of connecting rods and pistons are fitted together. Meanwhile, on the track, assembly has been going on. The crankshaft is fitted. Pistons are inserted into their balls. Connecting rods are coupled to the crankshaft. The sump is fitted.
The flywheel is attached and aligned. And the clutch is bolted into position. Before the head is fitted, all exhaust and inlet valves are lapped into the seats they will finally occupy. The twin overhead camshafts have always interested me, and I found that Jaguars were the first to manufacture such an engine in large numbers. With the head still free, tappet clearances are checked and adjusted. The head is then fitted to the block, making the complete engine ready for its gearbox. Each gearbox is individually assembled and the dexterity of the operator makes the job seem easy. A soundproof booth is used for testing every gearbox. Sensitive ears listen for peculiarities during an acceleration and braking run. Having passed the test, it is bolted to the engine. Then, together with the sump, it is filled with oil. During all these operations, the watchword has been quality, with one inspector to every nine operators. However, that is not enough, and every engine undergoes an exhaustive bench test before it is considered satisfactory. The engine is first run at a constant speed of 1,500 revs per minute for a period of three hours. Then, at various speeds and loads, up to a maximum of 3,500 revs per minute. With the engine purring healthily, testing ceases. The oil is drained off, the sump is cleaned out and reassembled, and the unit is ready for main assembly. Moving to the main shop, I saw various chassis details being assembled. The front axle and suspension are first built up as a unit. Then front and rear axles, complete with disc brakes, are fitted on a special trestle. Followed by the engine and gearbox. Finally, the transmission shaft is connected. The complete unit is then inspected. Before seeing the components fitted into the body, I had a look around the paint shop. This installation uses the most modern equipment and the latest production line techniques. The bodies are mounted on trestles which rotate through 360 degrees, enabling easy access for inspection and later spraying. Metal finishing by hand removes all small blemishes. 
Then the body is taken through a complete washing and phosphating plant. This ensures that the body is thoroughly clean, free from rust, and etched for keying of all paint coats. During this process, it is also dipped in a tank of primer paint, which protects the underneath and box sections of the car against rust. The shell is then sprayed with two coats of primer surface paint. The underside is then sprayed with a sound deadening and protective under seal compound. The body is rubbed down, a sealer coat is applied, and the body is baked. After baking, the body is allowed to cool, then vacuumed and rubbed down to remove all particles, making a perfect finish possible. Then follows three coats of synthetic enamel, which is harder and more durable than cellulose and has a greater luster. Bodies then enter the final baking oven and after baking are once more allowed to cool. A detailed inspection follows, and even if only a minute flaw is detected, the whole process is repeated until the rigid inspection is passed. Spraying completed, the body passes to an assembly track. First, a wiring loom, which connects the whole electrical system, is fitted. Then sound absorbing and heat insulating felt is fixed inside the shell. Door and window catches of heavy chrome are attached. Insertion of the windscreen followed, and I stepped in to take a closer look. Wiring up the array of instruments and switches is a tricky operation, and feminine fingers provide the answer. At the end of this track, a finishing touch. That distinguished radiator is fitted. The body and chassis are now ready to be married together. Mounting pads are used to help insulate the body from vibration. Heavy bumpers and overriders are fitted on every model. An adjustable steering wheel is also fitted. wheels of the respected owner's choice are attached. The car can now stand on its own four wheels for the first time. The tank is filled with petrol and the car is driven to the nearby trim and finish track. Trimming at this late stage avoids damage to the car's interior during manufacture and is unique in car production.
Approximately three complete hides go into every car. They are matched for color and grain, and any blemishes or scars are avoided. All leather-covered parts are prepared in a separate trim shop, employing a very high proportion of craftsmen. Returning to the track, I found door panels being fitted. Jaguar's own workshops also produce the beautifully grained veneered woodwork, which is a feature of all their products. The woodwork is carefully matched into sets and is different in each motor car. The floor is covered with thick carpets which have been tailored in matching colors. Almost at the end of production, seats are fitted. They have a steel frame and are padded with foam rubber for comfort. If required, a special mechanism for reclining the seat and holding it in any position can be fitted. At this stage, a further careful inspection of exterior and interior is carried out and any minor adjustments that may be necessary are dealt with. The sleek, purring motor car is now ready to see the light of day for the first time. Under the care of a skilled tester, the purr becomes more throaty as he puts it through its paces. Every car completes at least 30 miles on the road and minor adjustments are made during the run. Other items requiring attention are noted and the car is returned to the service bay for any necessary rectification and for final tuning. Another trip is then made on the open road with a different tester at the wheel and only when he is satisfied all is well does he return to the factory. The bodywork undergoes a critical examination and any rectification necessary is carried out. Then the interior of the car is vacuumed and brushed out. The whole body is polished by hand until it gleams. A final visual inspection takes place and if all is well, it is passed for dispatch. Now ready for its lucky owner, it will be delivered within a day or so. As I left the factory, I was invited to have a close look at an E-type. And then to take a short spin.
this sleek, bullet-shaped car, related closely to the famous record-breaking D-type, is way out on its own. A new thoroughbred, descended from a long line of champions, it sets the pace for tomorrow. In setting this pace, Jaguars can look to the future with confidence, equipped with the knowledge that they have at their fingertips the resources and experience to remain permanently one leap ahead. <laughs>